Thanks to the sponsor of this channel, Southern Heat Collectibles. Go to southernheatcollectibles.com for your MetaZoom Wilderness pre-order needs, or click the link in the description down below. Hello everyone, Peaceful here for another awesome interview video. Today, I have the honor of being joined on the channel by the one and only Water King of Queens, Andy. So, yep, Andy... Yep. Andy won the Casters uh, Society Extravaganza last weekend uh, in a field of 66. He got first place uh, with Loveland Frogman. Andy, thank you so much for coming on the channel. No problem. Glad to be here. So uh, first, I just want to let the audience know a bit more about you. I'm wondering about your uh, TCG or gaming background experience uh, before MetaZoo and then also what drew you into MetaZoo. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so believe it or not, I have never really entered into a competitive format um, uh, in like any TCG. It, all my TCG experience is from just casual play. It started with just playing with my brother in a whole bunch of TCGs um, ranging from, you know, the mainstream Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and then lower ones like um chaotic dual masters there was a mega man one uh maple story we we're just we just love cards we mainly uh, stuck with Yu-Gi-Oh. and then as i grew up there were like a couple of neighborhood friends who lived on my my block and we played Yu-Gi-Oh like every day um <clears throat> yeah so despite having like no competitive uh scene in any tcgs just Constantly playing that just helped me develop my critical thinking skills, and I feel like that was a main factor in what brought me to first place in the tournament. Cool. Uh, and uh, I know that you actually won the award for being the longest distance traveler uh, to the tournament. You flew in all the way from New York, I heard, with no luggage. Uh, how was your travel yeah. experience there and back? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm from New York, and coming to Texas, I had to take a flight to Florida and then to Texas. The layover was three hours, so the total trip took like 10 hours getting here. I flew in Friday, I arrived like Friday night, I went to my hotel, I just um, ordered food, watched a little TV. And then went to bed because I figured that I had a long day ahead of me and I needed to just rest my body, rest my mind. And then uh, upon arriving and then they were announcing like the furthest traveler actually uh, won this right here, a participation uh, medal with their stamp on it. So I actually won that. That's pretty cool. And um, yeah, and then... Uh, I flew back to New York the day after, um, Sunday morning at 7 a.m. I came back to my hotel probably like at 12, went to bed at 1, woke up at like 5, so I only had four hours of sleep, and then just went to the airport and slept the whole ride. So honestly, it, I was literally there for the tournament, and um, I felt like I had like little time to just uh, relax. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I guess with that particip participation medal, one thing funny, you're probably the only person ever to get a participation medal and a first place medal from the same event. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. So uh, looking at like your list, of course, you chose to play Frogs. Uh, what led you to choosing Loveland Frogman in the end as your deck for the event? Uh, yeah, so for Caster Society's Wednesday uh, night online um, events, I first started out with Cosmic because I just liked that deck. Um, it was a lot of fun just rotating with my Air Rods and Dark Watchers and playing my Blobs. But then just seeing a lot of uh, Water and Frogman decks, I, I had like I either just couldn't beat them or I had a hard time. I don't even honestly. I don't even think I uh, beat them during the Wednesday night events, and honestly, I just uh, I was just thinking like, how do I counter it? And honestly, like the only ways is um, either with Frost, Alaskan Vortex, um, or you have to get a monster with Fleet, or um, use uh, first anniversary celebration to nullify its traits and then attack. Or use um no and then um 
Uh, you can then target it with a spell or play a monster and then use lightning in a bottle. But um, the the two routes with fleet and, and a monster and lightning in a bottle, let's be honest, if you're playing Frogman, most of the time you're going to have Smoky Spirit in your hand. So just just coming to that conclusion, I was just like, it is really hard to counter Frogman. So I gotta I gotta jump in on it, and that's why I went with that mm -hmm. deck. So you thought that the uh, the power of the deck itself outweighed the uh, expectation of everyone planning to face Frogman. Yep. So uh, looking at your deck list in particular, there are uh, a few choices in particular that yeah. stand out as quote unquote before this at least unresolved debates in the I guess area of Frog players as to whether to run these or whether to not run these. So I guess uh, the two big ones that I'm curious about your reasoning, uh, and I, I think I personally agree for at least one of the two, is uh, you're running Index and Stew in your main deck. Uh, yeah, honestly, I just think Stew in most decks is just a staple. I think if you look at like uh, just MetaZoo right now with only like two sets out, um, you have to really realize there's not a lot of draw power. Um, you have your bookmark, you have your, um, either New Year's New Beginnings or New Beginnings, and then you do have Index to, um, get a monster, but then that's basically the end of your turn, and then you have a few cards, um, based on uh, whatever aura you're playing, and I really feel like just your draw power is really important that because um that really gets the cards that you need um and especially with coming in with my deck it solely revolves around getting the frogman being able to play it using at least two um if i want to play frogman i want to use its effect that turn i play it at least twice to really get its effect out and have a smoky spirits um, that way I can hopefully have it for next turn, so then I can have that advantage in just drawing two instead of one. And I feel like that is such a great advantage, because not only am I, like, putting to sleep uh, my opponent's monsters, and um, there's not a lot of cards that can remove sleep, um, and I'm also getting that draw power advantage. So uh, I really had... Um, I wanted to add in this, uh, and Stu, like I said, I think it's just a staple. Uh, yes, I and me and myself, you have a thousand light points. I'm willing to go down a lot to really get um, my combo um, so then I can have the upper hand. Like, I don't mind going down 100, 200, even I'm, I'm okay with going down to 500 um, as long as I'm able to come out with the upper hand uh playing that frogman using the lightning in the bottles uh and then being able to summon my few um people that can actually attack um to have control of the board with frogman and and then just take away my opponent's life points um little by little with my my crabs and chessy and the rays mm -hmm. uh, and then another card that uh i know some people run three some run zero you chose to run mm -hmm. a one water baby in your list in the main deck yeah so i figured um i want i want to draw frogman as fast as possible so um so looking at my deck it's being able to draw frogman as fast as possible um i did run two dampens just so then i can mostly deny my opponent of their draw power um either through um uh, new beginnings or New Year's, and uh, also uh, I also didn't run any format, any sort of uh, New Year's or New Beginnings, uh, because I did not want to give my opponent uh, the upper hand of having seven cards again in their hand, and it was I would definitely not run New Year's just because water has a strong draw power in of itself. That I do, I do not want to get rid of my cards. If if I if there is that possibility of top deck uh, beginning draw two um, frogmans, I will like never want to use New Year's. 
and um, to discard like my two Frogman, or I want to keep Frogman uh, and then play it when my opponent already has monsters on their field. I don't want to play Frogman with my opponent having no monsters because then I can't use its ability um, that turn by using Lightning. Um, and so with Water Baby, um, I ran, I had everything else, and that was kind of like a filler. It was like, yeah, if I draw it early game, if I only draw like one mana, I'm still able to play Water Baby. It does deal 40 damage, which is, which is a lot. And if my uh, opponent doesn't like paralyze it, I do get to draw one more card. And it, it, it just tied around the theme of just drawing f fast enough to get that Frogman. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, yeah, I definitely, I think it's really interesting uh, <clears throat> how much importance you put on, like, the card advantage, which uh, I kind of guess, besides the controlling aspect, is kind of like the crux of the Loveland deck, almost. Yeah. Uh, now, going into your actual uh, gameplay experience on the tournament, I just have a few rounds noted that I want to quickly get mm -hmm. your thoughts on. So... Uh, I believe up until round five, you were undefeated, 4-0. Uh, uh, yes. And then round five, you lost to Easton in the mirror. Uh, yeah. Of course, he, he's a really great player. but uh, Yeah, he was tough. Was that a, I don't believe, that match was not featured. Was that like a, a close match or a... Just... Um, honestly, no, he too owed me. And um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be real. Coming out of that, I'm like, if I verse him in the finals... I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. And then top eight came. Um, he versed uh, Speed Lemon. Speed Lemon took him out. And then I was like, I I have a chance with Easton out. I, I felt like he had a better um, water deck. Um, he was running Mailman. I didn't have Mailman. Um, and I feel like that is a good early game, a two drop. Um, but if... I do think to myself, if I had that option of owning a mailman, would I run it? I'm not entirely sure, just because it only deals 35 damage, and um, you're hoping that your opponent rolls to um, hurt itself from confusion. Like, would I have mailman or would I have baby that'll allow me to draw one to get a better chance of getting that frogman? So honestly, I think I with my deck, I wouldn't run... Mailman, if it's regular format, obviously we take out the Wood Devil, um, and then we'll put in the Mailman or um, maybe another Chessy Or a Link. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it was regular format, I think I would take out um, Wood Devil, of course, and then maybe Baby, put in one Lake and one Mailman. Um, definitely a Lake, and then I'm iffy about either do I want the Water Baby or, or the Mailman. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I I think um, that once once top eight came, I was like, I I have a chance because round five, uh, he he beat me two two zero, yeah, and it 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 wasn't even like it really wasn't um a, a close game. He he always had that advantage. Mm -hmm. And then after that loss, you uh, in your next round, you bounce back with a. 2-1 win versus uh, Liam, another really good player, pretty much the uh, the progenitor of the Napa Rebob strategy. What was uh, that match like? <clears throat> yeah, I versed two Darks uh, in the tournament, and that um, Blister Promo Mothman, a pain in my butt, that essentially was a game of luck, just hoping that my monsters, mainly Frogman, um do not get bounced back into my hand i just needed it to survive that initial tap frogman to to paralyze it then play my monsters out that turn um so then um because the mothman is paralyzed my monsters will not be um uh, scared but honestly i don't think that scenario ever went my way it was i had to um, I had to keep tapping my mana to play the Frogman, and it just got bouncing back into my hand. And then I would have to replay it, use Lightning, and I I really had to do that. Um, just so then I could stop uh, um, his Nappas because they were damage dealers. Um, but I think 
another part of um, a lot, a big part of uh, why I won some of those matches were my side deck was my side deck, um, especially with like early game decks with like the dark and the fearsome critters. I I sided in land tax in this format um, just so then um, it's an it's it's a in most cases it's either an equal or a um, a trade in my favor because I'm using a one card one aura a land tax to kill um, in most cases either a beastie um, of at least one aura and if they had any equips like bloodlust that's that's two cards now and at least two aura so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think at that point you were locked in for top eight as long as, as, as you didn't lose round seven. And uh, you yeah. drew 1-1 one, one to Philip. Was that an intentional draw or you played it out and drew? Um, no, that was an, an intentional. Um, the uh, two, the, we, were, we were all like top four or some sort. Um, and then we, um, there was two matches that um, it didn't really matter. Um, if we won or lost, uh, regardless, we would be in top eight. So then we just uh, intentionally drew. Mm-hmm. And then uh, going into top eight, your uh, quarterfinals match uh, <laughs> was not featured. It was versus uh, Logan. How did that match go? Uh, yeah, uh, I versed him. And at that point, um, I really started to get nervous. Because, you know, in the Swiss rounds, you're able to afford one, maybe two losses. But in the top cuts, it's either you win or you don't. And that's when I really got nervous. And I could tell because that's when my hands started to get really cold. Like, mm-hmm. I felt it. And, um, yeah, it was tough. It was my top eight and top four. They were both mirror matches of water. Um, and thankfully for the Wednesday night... Um, uh, battles i i versed some mirrors and then uh, with that battle experience i was able to um find out that i always in a mirror match i always want to be the second person to play my frogman um because the scenario goes out my opponent plays theirs i play mine to frog his then he has to play his second one to frog mine mm-hmm. but then i have my last and second one to frog his and now he has no more frogman um cuz you're only allowed to have two in your deck and then that's the upper hand um so i feel like because of uh the amount of times i've used this deck on the wednesday nights and the the mirrors and just the general um experience using this deck i felt like that knowledge um gave me a little advantage and then again like you just said uh your next match which was featured in the uh, top 4 was against bagira also the mirror you ended up uh Winning that one, um, not too. Uh, it it wasn't super close towards the end of the matchup, but uh, definitely still a really good match. Uh, and then I guess the time. I guess what what everyone's been waiting to uh, hear your thoughts on is the final. So before we get to that uh crazy game three moment, what were your uh, thoughts on like the first game and second game? How were you feeling uh, after those games going into game three? Um, so even just going into the final match, like, I, I, I figured, um, I was going to lose game one because my, my deck isn't built for like, um, the early game. It's not really built to really, um, to chip away at my, um, especially fearsome critters. You're summoning so many. I can only, um, luck luckily get so many lightning in the bottles with my frogman but then he'll still have his um at least like maybe half to a third of his army still on the field so going into that match i i a a big part of me knew that i was going to lose game one and then it's it that's where um the side deck uh, really came into play i if you um if people watch the matches you could see me really thinking about which cards I wanted to side in. I, I believe I cited in like seven cards um, for match two. And um, I actually took out like my late game um, beasties because I figured 
uh, going into this matchup, I just needed to survive the early game um, waves of his attacks and then deny his mid-game draw power. Because like I said in the beginning, this game doesn't really have that much draw power. And with Fearsome Critters, you're essentially laying out your whole hand. And then you want to hope that you get your growth, you get your bookmarks, you get your stews, and you get your uh, beginnings. Um, so I just need to survive that. So um, yeah, immediately, easy choice, your land taxes, your bubbling brews. Um, I, I took out... Um, like one chessy, I took out my mana ray, I took out um a crab, um, just so then I could have um more of I also noticed that he had like three auras game one, so I put in um I put in three absorb auras that way I could deny his um his mana intake and then also draw a card. And yeah. So I changed my deck to revolve around just denying as much as I could his early game. And then, and then uh, for the most part, always made sure, if I had Dampen in my hand, always made sure for the most part to have at least uh, two mana uh, on his turn so then I could Dampen his draw power um, spells. Mm -hmm. uh, so now, of course, uh, before we discuss the uh, big moment just leading up to it, for anyone in the audience who wasn't live, who hasn't seen it, I'm just going to play the clip on screen. Yes, uh, shout out to Damien and Logan. The whole R&D team. R &D. Uh, Can we get some fire in the chat for the MetaZoo R&D team? Let's get some fire in the chat. I mean, what a fun game this is. Look how much yeah. fun we're having watching this. We've been watching this game for 12 hours. We've been he, watching the card game. He needs, he needs a... Oh, my God! Oh my god! My god, Jesus! Oh my god! Jesus! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, now that they've all seen the clip, crazy moment. Um, I know going to that moment, I don't know the exact percentage, you probably had a pretty low chance of winning that game. You were at a 30 life. You had Not only did you have to uh, draw a flood there, but you would have had to, based on what he had in hand, uh, you would have had to succeed on both of your crab paralysis rolls to uh, survive that turn. And uh, just what what were you, what was going through your head right before that draw as you put it on the table and as you flipped it up, everyone went absolutely crazy. Yeah, that was indeed crazy. And every time I watch that clip, it, it just, it is just mind blowing. Um... Before that, I asked I asked the judges, can I count the amount of cards in my deck? Because I wanted to see the percentage myself. Mm -hmm. um, they said, no, but I can count like all the cards in my hand, my field graveyard, and then just do the reverse math. I was like, nah, nah, nah I don't want to <laughs> do that. It'll just take too much time. Um, but I actually uh, replayed game three, and I counted every time I drew. Um, and I had 13 cards in my deck. And I knew I didn't draw Flood the Earth um, at all. So I knew there was two out of 13, which is um, a little over 15% chance mm -hmm. of drawing it. And that was legit my last opportunity, my last attempt in drawing it. And um, because people couldn't see my deck, um, there's some people when I, when, I, when I told them, I did not know that was Flood the Earth. I took it directly from my, my deck and then put it in the middle because I wanted to do it for the dramatic effect because it was a do or die moment. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't Flood the Earth, it was end game for me. And then when I turned it over, it was Flood the Earth. I, I just remember hearing the whole like crowd in the room screaming. And then honestly, um, I feel like at that moment... I, I won the game because uh, my opponent, Spin Lemon, his hand at the time was either like one card or two cards. And in my hand, I had maybe one or two lightnings left. And then I think I had one or two smokies. Mm -hmm. um, not right away, but I did draw into it. So I, I, I did have 
a smoky in my hand. So going back, I know there was uh there was talk about I was playing too aggro, but uh and and that I should keep at least one crab um awakened. I did do that one turn um because he did have one card in his hand. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and you know, I, I don't know his deck. He could be running a monster with fleet um or he could draw into a monster and and then use lightning in the bottle or he could draw into a spell and and get uh draw power i i i thought of those scenarios um with the spell i could just dampen it which mm -hmm. i did in a future turn i dampened his bookmark um in the scenario he draws a monster and lightning in a bottle uh that's one attack if he draws if he had, because I counted his graveyard, he had four lightnings in his graveyard, so he could have one in his deck. If he drew a monster with fleet, and he had lightning in the bottle, that's two attacks. So I remember that turn, I did keep my crab up, and I did have smoky spirits. So that's that kept me safe, because I could block two attacks, which at most he could do. Uh, but then he played, uh, he he was able to uh, hold up, and then, he, and then he played like his three fearsome critters. And then um, there was that misplay with the Terra, and then um, Axe Handle. If if I knew that, I I, I would have attacked Axe Handle right away, because um, he didn't get that additional twenty HP from the Terra bonuses. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also misplayed in that game. I I kind of had two misplays. I played Wood Devil way too early. I should have remembered game two, where Wood Devil was a great counter for his poison tokens, his spider wings. So that I I misplayed. I should have held on to Wood Devil, and then two I attacked my crab with uh with his rope right, which was at fifty HP. I thought I killed it, but I forgot the terror bonus. So my crab only dealt forty. Um, but at that time I do remember I either had at least one, maybe two lightning in the bottles, so I was able to kill it. I did have thirty HP, and I still had Smoky Spirits in my hand. Um. And then I um, I kept a a crab awakened um, because at the time we didn't um, acknowledge the misplay of his axe handle should shouldn't have that twenty extra HP. Um, if it wasn't for that, I would have attacked it right away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it was his turn. He drew. Um, he had two attacks, uh, and I had a, uh, I had the crab, and then I had a smoky spirits. Uh, so with his top deck, he technically could have had, um, he could have had a monster with fleet, uh, which I think in that case I could have lost, but then, um, I I defended with crab. I drew, and then I had two smoky spirits, I believe. Um, and then uh, his axe handle attacked. I blocked, uh, and then it didn't die. But then it died after realizing the misplay with the terror bonuses. And then he attacked with Gumbru, and at that time it was Gumbru only on the field. I used smoky spirits, but honestly, I didn't even have to because that was just ten damage. Um, and I still would have lived. So honestly, I should have just saved that Smoky Spirits. Um, but then, yeah. Uh, I I knew the scenarios that could potentially happen. And so after that, um, he had no more cards in his hand. He could only top deck. And so that's why I went full aggro. Because I had Smoky, I had an I had another Smoky Spirits in my hand. So I knew I can hold off against one attack, which at most he can have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So definitely, although it may have looked risky to stream, it was all very well thought out and mathematically yes. sound. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Again, like, I, I crazy story. Uh, not a lot of competitive experience, but a lot of good experience with the deck. Flew all the way. No luggage. Took the whole thing down. Uh, lots of clippable moments. Uh, congrats again on uh your win. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it, if, it meant a lot to me because, yeah, like you said, it was. Uh, I don't. I haven't been in a competitive background, so this was my first tournament. 
Uh, I legit was going into it just to test the waters. Um, I had a slight feeling I might make top eight, but I had no idea I would be first. And this was just mind blowing to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess before we conclude, is there anything you want to shout out or just say to the audience that you, that you <clears throat> haven't had the chance to say yet? Um, I just, uh, I just remember on the side in my purple, just seeing my phone being blown off uh from my friend saying come on he just needs flood the earth and then when i drew he's like all i all i see is like yo let's go and then so i want to just shout out my friends who supported me i i i, I reread all my message all my private messages i reread the the chat um so thank you to all my friends uh senpai squad that's what we call ourselves uh thank you to flashfire tcg he's the one who brought me into uh meta zoo um so yeah it was a lot of fun, not just to win, but uh, have a community to celebrate with. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on this channel for an interview. Yep. Thank you for having me. And uh, for everyone watching, I hope you uh, learned a lot from these great insights. I know I did. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. Once again, thanks to Southern Heat Collectibles for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description or go to southernheatcollectibles.com to get wilderness pre-orders or other MetaZoo product. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. They both help the channel immensely. I hope you have a great rest of your day!